Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Shenanaderp server. Today we have some possibly interesting... What is up with that? Why, why are my villagers trapped in one house? Are all my villagers like in there? One, two... Three, four, five. Yeah, all my villagers are there. All my villagers are accounted for. Why were they all trapped in one house? I didn't trap them in there. They've, they've been perfectly fine. Haven't had a single incursion. Hmm. Anyways, uh, so let's, let's get started with our normal starting thing. So, time for the head placing ceremony. Da da da. Uh, last episode, we had 180. Today, we have 182. So, 181, 182. Yay! So, welcome, numbers 181 and 182. I'm glad you're here, and I hope you enjoy the show. And I would point out that YouTube is broken. Once again, it's not counting my views on my channel. Now, is what I was looking at before still around? I'm not seeing it. I was seeing a wisp. I saw one earlier. I don't see it anymore. Unless it's flying around somewhere else. Distinct possibility. But that's quite common. I'm always seeing wisps around here. I have five of these freaking trees these silverwood trees and they're supposed to take care of flux so i shouldn't be having wisps hanging around especially since i don't actually use any i haven't been using anything that uses aura for a while but no the wisps just keep showing up and it's kind of annoying and it's kind of confusing because i have no idea how they keep showing up See what my bees have done. I have an Imperial Drone, Steadfast Princess, and a Steadfast Drone. Okay. No, 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 no. Let's throw my Steadfast Princess back in there with the Imperial Drone. And then I'll throw another Imperial Drone in there to see what happens when that takes care of itself. And that reminds me, I have to empty out my blue canvas bag because I have a lot of bee stuff. <laughs> That I've never actually emptied out. Let's let's throw the bees that I probably won't be using in there. Because I've got a lot of them. We'll throw our mossy comb in there. Throw that guy there. And a whole crap ton of frames. I'm going to leave the scoops in there in case I do go bee hunting again. Let's throw all the proven frames in there. And we'll throw all the other frames in here. And once again, I'm running out of space for B stuff. I guess it's time to make a delivery to Compu, since he's the one that actually takes care of the... Actually does the B thing like he's supposed to, where I just kind of randomly throw things together and see what happens. I don't really do anything else. Hmm. Anyways, the first thing I want to show you guys is... The thing that I decided to do to take care of my uh, little problem with my ender chest. Where people were taking things from my ender chest without asking. I'd have less of a problem if they asked. But they don't ask and it kind of pisses me off. But we all know this room. This is my... Um, Thumbcraft room. This is where I go to do all my Thumbcraft stuff because there's no aura in the nether. Though I think that's wrong now. Ooh, I have goggles. I'll have to check on that. We'll do that next. But we've got lag. Uh, anyways, I did this. Now it looks like some kind of insane person's room where there's like rubber on the wall so you can throw yourself against the walls and not get hurt. But, uh, yeah, now they're completely surrounded in warded stone. Even underneath the br or underneath the wood here, it's warded stone. And even underneath the nether brick that's there, 
is warded stone. So the entire room is covered in warded stone except for these four blocks here. And even if you break them, break them, you can't get uh, through. And you can't reach. You can't reach from here, so you definitely wouldn't be able to reach from the other side. So um, I shouldn't have a problem with people coming in and taking my ender chest again. And uh, because this right here, the latch, has a diamond on it, this is only associated with me. So if even if some, well, theoretically, if somebody makes a chest with the yellow, white, and I think that's blue, that might be purple. I don't know. I'm colorblind. Fairly sure that's blue. I don't think I've spent the time to make purple yet. Oh, wait, no. I did. I have a purple canvas bag. Uh, Alright, whatever. Um, I think that's blue still anyways. I don't know. I'm sure you guys can tell me better than I can because, like I said, I'm blue, purple, colorblind. Anyways, uh, because this is a diamond on it, it's associated with me. Uh, and I can show you here. You see how it says Chrono underneath Ender Pouch? That's my uh, Ender Storage. So even if somebody else does the yellow, white, and blue, it won't see my stuff. Even if they put a diamond on it, they won't see my stuff. And that's what that means. That's what the diamond on the latch associating with the player that put it there means. It means that... It doesn't mean that somebody else can look in there and not see my stuff. It just means that this chest will associate with me and nobody else can create another chest that associates with my stuff. So unless they actually get to my chest or my pouch, they can't get in. So there's definitely an advantage there. This was a failed attempt to put a uh, one of those uh, trees the silverwood trees in the nether they don't grow in the nether so that's that's not gonna happen all right let's go get my goggles because i have a theory that new terrain generation has aura in the nether now and i'm always putting the wrong direction yes i still plan on expanding out there i just haven't gotten there yet uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's see, my goggles would be over here. They're a little worn down, but they'll work for my purposes, I just, just as long as I don't battle with them. Alright, so we can see my nodes. We can see I have 71 aura here, 50, 50 here, 85, 85, 71, 71. Yeah, so we can see our aura now, and if we go into the nether... Oh, that thing looks kind of violent, actually. 579, 579. Wow. <laughs> but anyways, if we go into the nether... Nada! We see nothing. Okay, and... Let's get out one of my repairable tools. So... Uh, the Thomcraft tools with repair on them use the aura in the surrounding environment to repair themselves. So my tools have never repaired themselves in the nether. Now this chunk of the nether was actually rendered a couple of updates ago, like several updates ago. So if something changed, we wouldn't have seen them until we went out. So if I do this... And randomly just destroy my pickaxe with repair. This is where I'd go to get uh, just random nether, spare nether brick. Anyways, okay. So we see the pickaxe not disappearing and coming back, disappearing and coming back. So it's not repairing itself. We can see that here. But I noticed when I was poking around earlier, if I went far enough out, it did repair. And yeah, this is my wither skeleton spawner. I got it to work, finally. Yeah, see? I'm getting heads! 
Um, but yeah, I can quickly show off how I did that. This one, this was easy. Once somebody actually pointed it out to me. Oil! Yeah, oil worked perfectly. <laughs> and I forget who told me oil. But whoever it was, thank you, because you bullseyed it. Oil works in the nether, so... Yeah, if you want to make a, uh... A, uh, uh, uh... Spawner. In the nether. Oil's the way to go. Though I do think I know how to make a, uh... Spawner in the nether. In vanilla. So I might have to set that up later, like as a tutorial video. Alrighty, so this is old terrain. Way down there is new terrain. And you know what? I'm going to hide this pickaxe for right now. And then I'm going to come back once I get down to the other side, the other portal. Oh, wait. I got an easier way to do that. That's what that's for. <laughs> Boop. Okay, so I'm here. Take off the goggles, put them back on. Aura! There's Aura here. 87 out of 2... Ooh, 0 out of 219. So there is Aura here. Yeah, alrighty. So is that because of the new terrain? Like, if I go back to the other side... Woo. Off the goggles. On the goggles. Nope, it's still showing up as there's aura. Okay, so does that mean that there was aura in the nether? It just, once you use it all, it's gone? Huh. Interesting. Well, let's head back to the other side. Let's get out my pickaxe. Well, my pickaxe is repairing itself. And it's going pretty quick, too. <laughs> yeah, this is confusing. I'm not sure how the aura works. This makes me wonder, if I do all the Thaumium stuff, like, over here, where my pickaxe can be repaired, instead of over here, where my pickaxe is not repaired, as we can see, will I get wisps? Can I recharge my wands? So many questions. So much curiosity. Huh. But, that's something to play with another time. What was I going to do today? What I was going to do today was actually see if I can make something, some kind of auto charger system. Now, yes, I did get this idea for the Minecrackers. No, I have absolutely no bloody clue how they do it. Uh, I never actually saw somebody make it. I just saw in in, in the live stream, B, uh, the, the B-double-O's uh, Cocktail Tuesday, where he put his jetpack in an ender pouch. It disappeared and then later on came back fully charged. So that's a great idea, and I like the idea. So I'm going to see if I can replicate that. But I think I am going to do it a little bit differently. Because there can be a few problems with the way they did it. Uh, first off, let's get rid of my nether rack. And I'm completely full of nether rack in that barrel. And I kind of have another barrel completely full of nether rack. So let's just chuck this stuff. Uh, let's get rid of that because I don't need that. Put this away in case I need it later. Oh. I wonder if I could put repair on that. I enchanted that normally. But I wonder if I could put repair on it. Too bad I don't have a repair book. I wouldn't mind having those goggles repair themselves. Just like I have everything else repair themselves. I also should put thorns on my stuff once I actually get uh, a thorns book. Yeah, I, I've been working on my fifth stack of enchanted books. Yeah, I haven't gotten anything really, really good yet. Another little piece of information. We have not updated to the latest version yet. 
because I'm not done getting soul shards yet. Uh, what was I going to do? Um, well, let's see. First thing I'm going to do... Well, let's see. Do I have... What is that? Transposers? Yeah, transposers. Okay, I got one transposer and one filter. Uh, well, if you don't put anything in a filter, it acts like a transposer, so that should work. I also need... I think it's a sequencer. I think that's what it's called. Yes, yeah, sequencer. I think this is what I'm looking for. So I need stone pointers, several stone cathodes, and stone wafers. Uh, stone wafers, stone cathodes, and a stone pointer. Uh, oh, my bench isn't over here. See, now this is a timer. Basically what happens is, however many intervals you have right now, I think its default is two seconds? I don't know. It fires off a redstone signal in three of the four directions. This direction, that direction, and that direction. And then a redstone signal inputted in this side will turn off the counter. The sequencer, on the other hand is a little different. Boink. Now let's set it down. Okay, now what it does is it has an interval of two seconds. Okay, and then I can see from here that it's actually between redstone signals. Now what it will do, it will just spin in a circle. And the entire loop will take eight seconds but in between each of these redstone or each of these redstone torches, it's two seconds. So every two seconds, one side or the next side in the chain will light up a redstone signal. So that one's lit up. Now that one's lit up. Now that one's lit up. Now that one's lit up. Okay. And as far as I know, if there's no way to actually turn it off, other than doing that. So this is what I'm going to use. So instead of having two timers set to, in an attempt to make them different, what I'm going to do is set up a sequencer so that the transpositor pulls out of an ender chest into an MFE or an MFSU, probably an MFSU because that's the big bad thing, and then out. Er, and then as the sequencer continues around, it fires off a redstone signal to the other side, the filter in this case, which outputs it into another ender chest. So I'm going to need to make two ender chests, two ender pouches, an MFSU. I'm going to need some redstone wire, which I don't have, but I can make. I don't have redstone wire? Must have used it all. I have insulated wire. That would work. Yeah, insulated wire will work. Uh, what else do I need? I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure what else I need. But for the most part, I'm just going to be winging this. So I'm going to go make the MFE, the two uh, ender chests and the two ender pouches. And I will be right back. Okay, I think I have everything I need, except for dies for the ender pouch, but let's start with the MFSU. The MFSU sitting right here won't blow anything up, but it will charge. It'll take forever to charge because I'm running it off of two geothermal generators, but eh, it should suit my purposes, and it shouldn't be too, too much of a problem because nobody uses the big bad armor. Uh, space is talking about the the video I put up yesterday. Um, Deathmatch. The fight between me and him. Okay, let's think. Big side's input, little side's output, so that's pointing in the right direction. I need an ender chest here. Alrighty. And then an ender chest here, and then the filter, 
needs to be pointed that way. Yes, okay. And then we take our sequencer, we plunk it down here, and let's think. How long do I need? Uh, no, no, not minus. Plus. Um, eight, nine, two. All right, so 20 seconds in between sections. And we put down the wire here, 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 here. And then theoretically, if I did this right, come on, come on. Yep, okay, that fired off, sweet. Alrighty, and now I just need to color code these things. Now, for any of the uh, derpers watching, <laughs> derpers, I am not going to make this a personal chest. So if you color code, or if you just wander over and use ender pouches on these chests, you'll be able to uh, access them just as easily as I will. Um, yeah, and they're going to be two different colors. So, orange, red, and yellow. Nothing in it. Good. And then this one will be red, yellow, hey, no, yellow. There we go. Okay, so, nothing in orange, Red, yellow. Nothing in red, yellow, yellow. Hopefully I'm not interfering with anybody else's. And then I take these ender pouches, set that one to there, and that one to there. And then theoretically, hmm, if I throw my jetpack into this ender pouch, after a good 20 seconds... So how was your day, guys? Mine was entertaining. Uh, went off to do tech support for a uh, meeting, a, a sales meeting or whatever it was, for a company I work for. And uh, yeah, nothing went wrong, so I was sitting in the back, bored out of my mind. I guess that was the best possible outcome. All right, that shot off. Ooh, it went in the in there, so now it's charging in the MFSU, and it's completely charged. I guess I could make this shorter since nobody uses the hardcore quantum armor or anything like that. Um, I guess I could also set this up so that. Uh, these two here, like this side and that side, fire off one of them. And that side and that side fire off the other one, and then I can do this twice as fast. So now I have my electric jetpack in the output. Okay, I got a remote charger, and it was relatively easy. Um, relatively straightforward. Okay, so yeah, uh, any of the other people on the server want to... Uh, have a remote charger for your jetpack, there you go. Uh, just head on over and associate your uh, blah, 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 ender pouches. You'll, you'll need two of them. Uh, input is this side, output is that side, which I'm going to actually name my ender pouches, which I should be able to do fairly straightforward. Might have to sit in my grinder a little bit, but outside of that, shouldn't be too much of a problem. How much is this gonna cost me? Ooh, five. Uh, charger input. And now I see charger input, and then I just get five more levels and label that charger output. And I won't have a problem. Awesome! Uh, let's respond to space. Uh, yes. 
Okay, yeah. Fairly simple, yes. Alrighty. Ooh, I can increase the size of these guys. Uh, those are the totems. Yes, I want the totems. When are we updating the server? <laughs> no idea. Haven't spoken with anyone outside of you for weeks. Yeah, everybody else is busy doing their own things. Probably school, work, that kind of thing. So it's been pretty much only me in space for, like, weeks now. <laughs> and adult makes the big decisions about upgrades and stuff like that. So, yeah, unless I hear from him, I kind of don't do anything. Alrighty, so I just need one more totem piece, and we have same size. Yes, I know this won't actually do what I need it to do, and that's actually not the right size either. Oh, wait, what the crap? Huh. Okay, these have the, the, the obsidian bricks, obsidian, obsidian tiles. These two have the obsidian tiles on the bottom. These two do not. All right, that's going to have to be something I keep an eye on. Eh, whatever. It's not like I'm actually using it for anything real. Well, yeah, those things control uh, 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 the portals. Uh, no. What are they called? Nod nodes. Nodes. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, here, I'll show you. Those things. Uh, it, it, the, the, the totems there are Thumbcraft stuff. And if you set them up just right, you can actually pull nodes. The, the nearby nodes, it'll pull it into the center of the totems. But again, you have to set them up just right. And I, I don't remember where I read it. I don't remember if it was in the Thaumonomicon or what. But I read it somewhere on how to do it, and I forget. And I forget where I read it. Too, so yeah okay so I'm really far away from home and that says 10,108 meters away and my jetpack is completely empty take me a long time to swim back home ignore the ender, por ender portal noises this is just a demonstration so all I'll have to do is get my two bags open up the input throw it in there wait about a minute approximately wait a minute to loop the whole way around let's see that would be what I, I put them in 20 seconds right so 20 seconds to there and then 20 seconds to there that'd be 40 and then 60 and then a minute 20. So, okay, so a minute 20 at most. And I see wisps over there. <laughs> Come on, go away. I'll shoot the wisps while I'm waiting. Oh, they went away. Oh, they're back. Shoot the wisps. Shoot the wisps. Oh, hey, that one just straight up disappeared. What the crap? I know, I see these freaking wisps everywhere. One. They like dodging, don't they? Wee. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Two. All right. Nope, not yet. Nope. It's it's out of the input bag, and there it goes, fully charged in the output bag. Hey, that worked perfectly. Alrighty, so hey, there we go. And I got them labeled input, output, so I could actually keep track of which one's which. Uh, now I am mildly curious about one thing. What happens if I throw something that's not chargeable in there, like this obsidian tile? If I throw that in there and then I wait the, what, two minutes approximately? I could probably change that time. Yeah, you know, I probably could, thinking about it. 
I could probably make this a lot more straightforward. But I'm going to have to think about that for a little while. Do some math. Make it uh, shorter between times where it pulls and starts to charge. Where did the other wisp go? It kind of went away. Alright, so that's gone. Now does it show up here? If it pulled out of the input, it should put into the output then. Oh wow, that was a lucky shot. Yes, I just randomly shoot wisps for fun. It gives me practice in my bow skills. As we can tell, I need it. And it disappeared. All right. Yep, there it is. Okay, so that's what happens. Um, I was kind of hoping it wouldn't. I was kind of hoping that the MFSU would qual would qualify as a non-valid input for something like the Obsidian Tile, something that can't be charged. But that's not the case, so... Eh. Not a big problem, just mild annoyance. Just gotta make sure that I only put chargeable stuff in there. Whee. But I could use that to charge anything. Uh, the quantum armor, the nano armor, uh, the nano sword, chainsaw, drills, anything. My electric wrench, even. Of course, I'm gonna have mild problems with power consumption for a little while. All right, so let's think about this for a second. If I change this and put this like that, and then change the times. So let's see, two, three. I'm waiting. How long do I have to wait till charge? Well, let's see, from my understanding, Gravy chest plate, chest piece, which, ooh, is not the biggest thing lap track, or, uh, uh, ultimate lap packs are. Oh, lord. Um, you know what, let's give it 30 seconds. So if we switch this down to 10 seconds in between. So now, there is a 10 second delay between this one and this one. So this will fire off, or no, 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 30 second delay. So this will fire off, it will wait 30 seconds, and then this one will fire off, and then it will wait only 10 seconds before it fires this one off again. That means I have a grand spanking total of 40 seconds for each loop. So at most, I have to wait 40 seconds for a full charge on a jetpack. Yay? Sweet. I think that will work. Uh, did I get anything good? I don't. I didn't get anything. Oh, I bet you I know what happened. I bet you the server rebooted since the last time I looked at the uh, the, the Twilight Quarry thing. Yeah, I need to make an actual quarry again, not just the turtle. Uh, where is he? He's down there. Oh yeah. Oh, what time is it? Ooh, it's one o'clock. We go and reboot again here shortly, so... Yeah, that's as far as the turtle made it before it rebooted. So I just may as well wait until tomorrow to restart the turtle. Uh, am I on diamond level yet? Nineteen. Nope. Alrighty. Well, then I guess I just don't worry about that right now. Get plenty of stuff from it, though. Enough stuff that I'm running out of storage space again. So I'm going to have to uh, get... Uh, I'm going to have to build an actual storage uh, uh, warehouse. That's the word I was looking for. Warehouse. I'm going to have to actually build a warehouse. And since I've been wanting to expand that way anyways to take care of the small problem with another portal being out in the middle of no man's land... Yeah, I got plenty of space to build a, a, a warehouse. 
And I want to build my city again, which I just haven't gotten around to starting yet. I just need a whole crap ton of wool. Which begs the question, I wonder if Compu's wool farm is maxed out yet. Well, I guess I kind of got to go through the nether to figure that out. So let's head off over there, and this is, that'll be the last thing I do for this episode, is head off to the nether, or head off to Compu's place and see how the wool farm is going. And, okay, fight some mobs real quick. Chuck, chuck, chuck. Oh, that was in limbo. Like, don't worry, I'm going to put up a railing. And then I'm going to put something cool in there. I'm not sure what, but I'm going to put something cool in there. And, uh, put up railing around it so it's like, I don't know, something interesting to look at as you walk past? I don't, I don't know. Okay, so we have a lot of wool, but not nearly as much as I expected. Huh. Um, does that mean that this isn't what the... We're missing sheep again. Comp you! We're missing sheep again! Uh, I guess they just glitch out and disappear, because this entire area is protected. You can't exactly... kill them. Not easily, anyways. Not without breaking things. Might be able to shoot them through the uh, fence, but... They should be pretty well protected against anything that would shoot them. Like, the only thing that would possibly shoot them would be that thing. His little turret cart. There. And that's only if a uh, zombie pigman comes out of the nether portal and goes that way. But that's why this wall's here. To protect the sheep. So, I have absolutely no idea what's going on there why sheep keep disappearing. But, you know, a lot of things keep disappearing. Uh, quarries disappear all the time. My spawners disappeared. Um, my two little golems disappeared. The, my farming golems that I pointed out earlier, that I showed off in a previous episode, they disappeared. They're gone. Don't know where they went. Uh, Compu's iron golems that were in here, they disappeared. Uh, I think his chicken spawner disappeared at one point. Lots and lots and lots of stuff disappeared. I guess I guess we're going to have to upgrade sooner rather than later. That'll probably break more things, but uh there's a lot of flowers around here. Well, he is doing a lot of the bee stuff. He's got an automatic bee farm going. Looks like some yeah, it looks like uh the same kind of setup as generic bee had. And he's got the wrong... Well, he's missing a golem. He should have a wooden golem. But maybe his wooden golem disappeared too. Alright. Well, anyways, I'm going to end this episode here. Oh, he's got the cicada here. Good thing they fixed that particular bug. No pun intended. Anyways. um, I'm going to end the episode here. Because I really don't think I have anything else that I can talk about. Uh, run out of ideas kind of quick. But hey, that's what I need you guys' help for. You guys can help me figure out things to do! Aside from build my city and actually, you know, do things that I've been supposed to do for the longest time. But anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm going to see you guys next episode. And I will say as always, keep playing the game and have fun.